Welcome uh, friends and colleagues to my channel. I am Professor Khalid Khan. Uh, today we will talk about nutrition in pregnancy and we will ask the question whether mothers need to eat for two. I am based at the University of Granada and I have the privilege uh, of the company of my friend, colleague and co-author Professor Basil Water. I would like, Basil, if you'd make a brief introduction about yourself. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Khalid, for inv inviting me today. Uh, so my name is Basil Wata. I'm an associate professor of reproductive medicine and the medical director of the clinical trials unit at Anglia Ruskin University in the UK. I am a consulting gynecologist and a subspecialist in IVF um, and working within the NHS and uh, most of my research is focused on pregnancy and reproductive health um, and uh, always a pleasure to join you for another thrilling and exciting chat. Thank you, Basil. So the papers we are going to cover today are these three. Uh, on two of them, uh, I have the pleasure of being co-author with Professor Basil or just Basil, my friend, uh, to make a start in this presentation I think it is no secret that obesity is a growing worldwide problem and obesity in pregnancy also is a growing worldwide problem. Yeah. Therefore, attention ought to be paid to nutrition during pregnancy and uh, Mediterranean diet appears to be a potential uh, intervention, one might call it during pregnancy with a view to reducing complications like diabetes, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, but also to control the mother's weight. The Mediterranean region you can see in the image, the countries around the Mediterranean Sea form the Mediterranean region. And Basil, do you mind explaining what are the key ingredients of the Mediterranean diet? Sure thing. So um, we know that um, from an epidemiological perspective, um, the population of the Mediterranean have less incidence of uh, these metabolic disorders and is thought to be strongly correlated with the type of diet they consume. Which uh, w And the two cardinal features is high intake of extra virgin olive oil and also high consumption of walnuts, hazelnuts and almonds that are rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids that are thought to be very helpful in reducing endothelial and vascular disease and cardiovascular disease. Uh, so these are the main features, but other very important elements include um, daily consumption of fruit, vegetables, um, beans, legumes, um, as well as um, a frequent consumption of fish and seafood with, you know, less rare consumption of chicken, eggs and red meat and very, very rare consumption of commercial sweets like cookies and donuts that we know that, um, you know, a high um, uh, glycemic index diet in pregnancy can be quite um, harmful. Okay, well, thank you, Basil. So with this background, we move on to a systematic review undertaken some years ago, uh, which appears here as uh, the summary presented in the Health Technology Assessment Report. It identified that dietary interventions were likely to be most effective uh, in controlling gestational weight gain amongst obese pregnant women, and perhaps also bring about other benefits. This background led us to design a trial called ESTEAM, which was run by, uh, by Basel. So I'll ask him to give us an overview of how this trial was planned, designed and delivered. Sure, thank you. So, so ESTEAM was a multi-center um, effectiveness uh, trial that run across five um, uh, you know, uh, maternity units in, in the UK uh, and across London and Birmingham. And the idea, it, the idea of the trial was to randomize uh, women with high metabolic risk factors at the time of booking to pregnancy. So the metabolic risk factors being high um, um, uh, BMI, uh, abnormal lipids or high lipids and high blood pressure at the time of booking. So women were approached to, to join the trial. Those who declined to be randomized or that could not meet the criteria were then 
enrolled in a cohort study. So it's an RCT nested in a cohort. And then those who were uh, who were enrolled into the randomized trial were either offered a Mediterranean diet um, from time of booking all the way to delivery, or they continued with routine care. And the, both groups received um, nutritional support throughout the, the pregnancy. And those in the Mediterranean diet group, we provided them with olive oil and a standardized portion of uh, nuts throughout the pregnancy to ensure that they have high intake of these items that are not routinely consumed in a British in a British population. Okay, thank you. So this trial was planned, received ethics committee approval. It was uh, publicly registered, and uh, in the early course of the trial, its protocol was published in the British Medical Journal Open Access version. Uh, Basil, what were the difficulties in encouraging people to use the Mediterranean diet? Because the area where we conducted the study in East London, uh, there wasn't uh, the tradition of cooking Mediterranean food. 100%. I think uh, running such a study in a large metropolitan city like uh, like London, where there's multiple ethnicities, varied food cultures, and, and, and food is not just our daily consumption, it's strongly linked to our culture and what we used to cook. And often when you do these studies for the pregnant mother, it doesn't mean that it's just the mother that is changing her dietary habits, but it's actually the whole household because she's responsible often for cooking for everyone. So the olive oil should go in all the food items and same for the nuts and, and other elements of, of, um, of food. So we face such, um, you know, cultural difficulties. We, we face some methodological difficulties in terms of how do we assess the dietary intake throughout the trial? How do we ensure everyone is following the right advice it so happened that during the, the trial there was a period of ramadan which in, in east london a high muslim population so we had to adopt a little bit into and offer varied advice on how our uh, participants can continue to observe the the uh, the intervention we actually published an article about the methodological challenges um for esteem we can link but put, uh, put, put the link uh, in the in the comments below. Um, so it's been quite a, an interesting trial to run and quite reward, rewarding to see uh, to see it to its fruition with uh, such a high number uh, of women recruited and um, um, followed up. Yes, thank you. Well, we might do another video on the challenges of trials in the area of nutrition in pregnancy. So we'll bring up uh, the, the the issues raised. Uh, and experienced by ourselves uh, during yeah. the conduct of this study. Well, moving on to the results, well, after uh, after all these 500 women per group were recruited and followed up, and uh, the baby's outcomes at birth were measured, we were then able to construct tables of this kind and you see them taken from the publication in uh, the PLOS Medicine Journal. Uh, there is a lot of data and statistics here, but uh, looking at it in a brief form and focusing on the main outcome, uh, the mother's outcome was measured in terms of whether complications such as uh, gestational diabetes and preeclampsia were uh, avoided and this result was statistically significant and if we look at specifically the outcome of gestational diabetes on its own this too was statistically significant uh, meaning that those who consume the Mediterranean diet less often experienced uh, uh, gestational diabetes and other complications and when this analysis was adjusted in a multivariable model, taking account of uh, other aspects uh, of the study, the result remained significant, showing that this was a stable, trustworthy finding. And combining these findings with another similar trial in a meta-analysis, uh, the benefit of the Mediterranean diet concerning, uh, concerning the prevention of gestational diabetes was found sustainable across the two studies and uh, homogeneous. So I'll ask uh, Basil to wrap up 
with other findings that we haven't presented here. And uh, I think it wouldn't be unfair for me to conclude that uh, the diet of Mediterranean style given to obese mothers and mothers with uh, metabolic risk factors prevented gestational diabetes. We could be confident about this finding, isn't it? 100%. I think we have very high um, a degree of certainty that um, a Mediterranean diet is of benefit uh, to mothers in pregnancy. Uh, the diet is particularly attractive because it's easy to, to follow and it's EU caloric. So um, we know that as we started our question, a, a mum in pregnancy requires a certain amount of caloric intake to ensure this, you know, adequate growth of baby. But we also know that those mums with gestational diabetes are at higher risk of large for gestation age or small for gestation age in, the, in their children. So we were, when we were conducting the study, we were hoping to see a beneficial impact into the children as well, not just the mothers. Uh, but this did not translate in, in, in our study. And the, la the largely the benefit is driven by the significant reduction, it's almost 80% reduction in the risk of gestational diabetes in this particular high risk group. We were also hoping to see a protective effect in terms of um, preeclampsia and hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy. But we saw slight signals of the reverse of that of an increase, although this was not statistically significant. So I think larger studies with a specific focus for those at higher risk of uh, hypertensive disorder in the pregnancy will be required to, to explore this hypothesis. But um, I fully agree with you, Khaled. I think Mediterranean diet is a very uh, convenient and uh, suitable and beneficial diet to offer for, for women in pregnancy. Okay, thank you. So this brings uh, me to ask you uh, the question I posed in the beginning. Do mothers need to eat for two? And for mothers who are obese and overweight, uh, what concern should they have if they have to place some restrictions on their diet? Um, it's a commonly posed question, and, and I, I, you know, we hear it a lot in the antenatal clinic, but uh, the re reality that it's no, uh, there is very clear guidelines from the Institute of Medicine and other regulators and royal colleges about what uh, gestational weight gain we should observe in pregnancy. And we know that there is higher correlation of increased gestational weight gain. So in, in, in the rapid gain of weight in the pregnancy is associated with higher risk to both the mom and the baby. So we should not encourage the women to eat a lot. And e equally, it's not just the quantity, it's also the quality as we are here highlighting is that it's about eating healthier food with healthier nutrients inside them with you know a you know a measured caloric intake that will help the mother to ensure she has the right nutrients for her baby to con and to enjoy a healthier pregnancy so the answer is no you don't need to uh, in, in, engage in overeating you need to engage in healthy balanced and uh, eating throughout the pregnancy okay thank you very much so with this we'll bring our uh, video to end and we'll encourage you to ask uh, any questions in, as part of your comments. Uh, and depending on what feedback we receive, we'll prepare uh, further uh, vlogs to take this topic forward. And I close this session uh, with uh, thank you to my friend Basil, who joined me online from London. Thank you, Khaled.